Hello, and welcome to episode 36 of the Mindful Knitter podcast. My name is Claire, and I am your host. Um, I'm coming to you today from the southeast of the United States, where I live with my husband, Alex, and our three Great Danes, Murphy, Obi, and Nali. Uh, if you are new, welcome. This is primarily a knitting and crochet podcast. Um, lots of yarny goodness, truly, but we focus on a lot of knitting and crochet. Today is a lot of crochet. Um, but there's quite a bit of knitting and uh, hand spun yarn and things like that today too. Um, there's actually a, a few hand spun yarn items. Uh, I knit a lot, I crochet a lot, I spin a lot of yarn, um, and what else do I do? Um, I do a little bit of weaving, so sometimes we talk about that on the channel, and hmm, sometimes a little bit of felting and stuff like that, embroidery. So anything fiber arts related is kind of fair game, but mostly it's knitting and crochet and yarn, <laughs> often hand spun yarn. Um, but there's not always hand spun yarn. So today we've got lots of finished objects, uh, a few works in progress, and a couple of acquisitions. Um, there's a book acquisition. Um, yeah, maybe there's just the one acquisition, just the one book, I think. <laughs> Um, so that's kind of what we've got on the docket for today. I keep looking over here because I have this basket. Here's all the stuff that I'm showing you today. So if you saw last week's episode, I had so many finished objects because it had been a couple months since the last podcast. Uh, so I had a lot of finished objects to share with you guys. I have a few this week too, um, and then some works in progress as well. So it's just my hands have stayed very busy lately, um, which has been a blessing. I've been really happy I've been able to do that. Uh, and if you're a returning viewer, I didn't say welcome back, but welcome back <laughs> if you're returning. I am so glad that you come to hang out with me. Um, if you want to connect on social media, you can find me on Ravelry as Mindful Knitter Pod and on Instagram as the.mindfulknitter. And if you ever need to email me about collaborations or with questions or um, anything of that nature, then you can find me uh, or you can email me at Claire the Mindful Knitter at gmail.com. I feel like that's all of the intro type stuff. Um, hmm. We'll just kind of get well so that our format for today will be kind of our normal format so finished objects first of which i have so many most of which are crochet but there are definitely some knitting finished objects too um and some hand spun uh and then i've got some works in progress mm, i think all my works in progress are knitting today and then i'll show you the book i got it's a knitting related book and i'm super excited about it and I guess we'll do a little bit of chat at the end as well. I feel like there's something else we're gonna do today that I had in mind and I can't remember what it was, but we'll find out together because I'll remember as we go. So we'll just dive into finished objects, shall we? So my first finished object, oh, and if you do have any questions about any of the yarns I talk about or the designers or um, anything of that nature, then all of that is in the description down below the video. All of my social media information and, and like email and stuff, that's all in the description as well. So if you just click uh, more below this video, it'll open a drop, uh, not really a drop menu, I guess just a drop screen, and it has all of my show notes. So you can find dyers, designers, yarn, patterns, all that kind of stuff down there. I guess I'll just mention very quickly too what I'm wearing. Oh, I talked about this last week. Not last week, two weeks ago. Uh, but I didn't show it to you on because I was wearing a different finished object. Uh, so this is a just kind of make it up as you go sort of crochet top that I made this summer out of silk yarn. Um, it's a silk fingering weight yarn and I just completely made it up as I went. I used a, I used the chain on number from a different pattern. Um, but other than that, I just basically knit, knit two rectangles and I made a little like meshy lace kind of the thing up here and then I seamed them together. So nothing super fancy. Um, but I should, I told you guys I'd show you what it looks like on. So this is what it looks like on. It's lower in the back and in the front. 
So you can kind of see that. And it's just very flowy. And since it's silk and since it's crochet, it is so cool <laughs> when it's hot in the summer. Um, we've got the little like mesh, mesh lace going on. Yeah, so just super comfortable. And it's kind of on the warmer side here today. It's not super warm. It's like in the 80s. But this is very comfortable to be wearing in the house today. <laughs> so um, when I go back upstairs, I might put on a sweater. But for down here, it's very comfy. So very airy, very light and breathable. Um, and I really enjoyed this crocheted summer top that I just sort of made up. And <laughs> you could probably make up too because it's just two rectangles. <laughs> you seam them together. I used one skein of yarn for the front and one skein of yarn for the back. And that's all she wrote. So my new finished object for today, or one of them, we'll start with a knitted one. I'm really excited about this one. This is my cozy shawl. It blocked out huge. This is two skeins of worsted weight yarn, two skeins of Cori Confetti by La Bien Ami. Um, I have my show notes on my tablet today, which is what I usually do. Last week I printed them off, which worked okay. Um, but it is nice to have them on here because then I can also use this to look at pattern pictures to show you guys. Um, Cozy Shawl is by Jennifer Evans and it's a free pattern on Ravelry. It was so addicting <laughs> to knit. It's a, like a broken rib kind of pattern. Um, and the La Bien Ami Cori Confetti was just so much fun and such a joy to knit. This is the, the Amy's Peach Sweater number one was the colorway for this. But you can see kind of the broken ribbed texture. I haven't woven in my ends yet, which I'm just now noticing. So ignore any, well, I've, I've woven in my ends, but I haven't trimmed them yet. So please ignore that. If you notice any ends that need to be trimmed. So cute. So yeah, we've got the spine in the middle, which is lovely. And then the broken rib that comes out. And then we've got this lovely little like eyelet at the bottom. I did make my border narrower than the pattern. And then I um, used some of my own hand dyed yarn um, for that little like border as well, because I didn't have quite enough of the worsted to get it all the way to the size that I wanted. And I kind of did like to have a little accent border. Um, so this is uh, Angora yarn that I dyed with avocado. Um, and it gives this lovely dusty pink kind of color. And this is just the coziest, oh my goodness. Look how cozy I'm gonna be this winter, you guys. Ah, uh, friends, I'm gonna be so cozy. I'm gonna be so warm. Okay, so this is perfect. <laughs> this is like the perfect size for me for like a big, cozy, fluffy kind of shawl for the winter. I don't really want to get a whole lot bigger and fluffier than this. Um, this is, and I can't believe that two skeins of that Cori Confetti blocked out to be so huge. Um, yeah, it blocked out huge. This was knit on mm, pretty big needles. It was either US 8s or US 10s. So it's a pretty uh, big gauge. So that does contribute to it. Like it did open up quite a bit. It's a fair, it's not a dense fabric at all. Um, but I think it'll still be nice and warm because sometimes having like those little like air pockets um, kind of like traps the air and then that air warms um, in between the fibers. And so actually like so, a, a fabric that isn't super dense can still be surprisingly warm because of the way that it traps the air. Um, so I didn't need it to be super dense. It's, just, it's very light. And just look at these like little pops of color from the confetti tweedy nip bits. Uh, I love it. I used every single 
inch of this yarn. Um, yeah, because when I'm doing a project like this in particular, but with a lot of my projects, um, if I'm using more than, you know, one color and it's not super, super obvious where like one color ends and the next begins, I just knit until the end of that yarn and then I just add the new one rather than stopping like at the end of the row and then adding a new one because just having those like t long tails or even like, I don't know, sometimes they're like really long tails. That just annoys me <laughs> for some reason. If I don't need to do it, then I won't. Uh, I want to use up every single ounce of the yarn that I can. And so that's what I did. Um, I just knit it until it disappeared and then I added on my pink and um, yeah, like on one side, I think the border is like one row wider than the other side, but you can't, you can't really even tell. You certainly can't tell when I'm wearing it. So that's my cozy shawl and it is very squishy and nice, that broken rib really is um like it's a lovely texture to look at but it also is very squishy which is so great i'm just really pleased with the shawl i could talk about it <laughs> for a long time um the fabric is really light since it's only two skeins of worsted and um and the way that this yarn is spun it's a pretty open spin it's like a it's like a woolen spun kind of yarn at least, mm, I would kind of classify this as a, as a woolen spun yarn. I do feel like it kind of sits right in between a worsted spun and a woolen spun. And also, you might not know what that means, um, because not everybody spins yarn um, or is interested in that kind of thing. <laughs> so uh, basically, a woolen spun yarn is like fluffier. Um, do I have a good example? I don't have a good example. I do have a fairly good example, actually. Um, so this is some of my hand spun. This is another finished object. I'll just go ahead and show you now. Um, this is a two-ply that I spun up. It's a BFL yarn. Um, so it's a blue face luster and yeah, two ply. And I think it was 210 yards that I got for the, I can't remember if this was four ounces or if it was three and a half ounces. But yeah, so this is my little two ply. I think that this was called freshly washed laundry or fresh freshly laundered shirt something like that was the colorway and who was the dyer <laughs> who was the dyer i'll try to find out for you guys and put it in the show notes um but this is not a super super i've seen this colorway in multiple yarn shops so i do know um, a lot of people do stock this fiber if they're stocking fiber for spinning but you can kind of see on here that this is very and I did this very thick and thin um so this is not a super super even spin but I was kind of going for something a little bit more thick and thin and um so you can kind of tell that this yarn is very fluffy and wooly and airy versus something like this which has like a tighter twist. So this would be what we'd maybe consider like a worsted spun versus a woolen spun. One is, one's got a lot of air in between the fibers and one is a very tight kind of twist where there isn't much air trapped in the yarn um, itself. It's a denser little thread versus this is a very like thin and not thin, um, a very airy kind of thread, if you will. Um, so that's kind of the difference with worsted and woolen spun yarns. Um, just one has more air in the yarn and than the other. So this I feel like leans woolen spun, but it does kind of sit somewhere in the middle, like I would kind of say. 
Um, cause I don't actually know like what their spinning process is for their quarry worsted. Um, and this is their confetti worsted and it's, it is a little bit confusing because worsted is also a weight of yarn. So, um, or like a gauge. So it goes fingering weight, which is very thin sport weight, which is a little thicker DK, which stands for double knitting, which is just a little thicker than the sport. And then we've got worsted, which is just a little thicker than DK. Aaron, etc. <laughs> um, but worsted also refers to the style of spinning, whether you're spinning the fibers all fluffed up with a lot of air in them, or whether you're smoothing out the fibers before you spin them so all, they're all aligned uh, next to each other versus like fluffed up like this. The fibers, <laughs> um, they're either like all combed in one direction or they're all like fluffed up and kind of tangled where a lot of air can get trapped in them. Yeah, the one with all the airiness is woolen because I guess it's kind of like woolly and fluffy and then worsted is when all of the fibers are kind of like aligned and going one direction and so they sit smoothly next to each other and make this kind of denser kind of yarn. I don't know if any of you guys find that information interesting or if you already know all of that <laughs> but in any case if you're interested in the La Bienemi, Cory worsted or um, worst or uh, Cory confetti. Uh, it's it's a very light, airy, fluffy kind of yarn, and um, all of these beautiful colors were just incredibly lovely. And it's like a fun surprise. It's like a party to knit. I think that the Cory confetti is a really apt name because it is kind of like you're knitting a little party the whole time. So much fun. So. Very excited to have that off of the needles. I was honestly though a little sad to not be knitting on it anymore because it was so fun. So I might need to get some more Cory Confetti. Um, La Bien Ami actually just today released a spinning fiber line uh, and they've got some really adorable painted spindles, like drop spindles and Knitty Naughties, um, which are just so incredibly adorable and Oh, I don't need a drop spindle, but they're really cute and I kind of want one. Um, and I kind of want one of the painted nitty naughties because they're also really cute. But anyway, they've got fiber now at La Bien Ami and um, they have like a confetti, like a quarry confetti style fiber that you can hand spin yourself. So I definitely want some. I don't know when I will procure that, but I uh, think that will be in my future at some point because it was just way too fun. So if I could spin my own and then get to knit with it, it's like a party for spinning and for knitting. <laughs> Amazing. So those are two finished objects. I will, I'll stop on those because I have been really talked. I haven't even started on my coffee. This is my coffee today. It's in a Chattanooga Yarn Company mug. Chattanooga Yarn Company has only been around for about a year. Actually, I think exactly a year. October 1st was when they opened last year in 2022. Um, and so that's it's Chattanooga's only yarn shop and they've been around for a year. And um, I just think that's so fun. And I love the chartreuse coffee mug. I haven't even drunk my coffee and I am talkative. So hopefully <laughs> it's an interesting kind of talkative. I'll go on to the next finished object because there are a lot of them and I need to get through them. Although I don't really love to like rush. I do like to take my time. This was just a little like one evening project. Um, it's kind of like, it turned into like a kerchief slash bandana style kind of thing. Um, I just wanted something in these colors for an event that I'm going to this weekend. And I thought, Oh, it'd be, what if I could do a little cowl? But then I was thinking, ooh, I could do like a little bandana style cowl because those are so cute. But then when I tried to like put it on after I'd blocked it, I was like, oh, it's like a little bigger than I thought. I don't really know how I want to do that. But I ended up tying it and kind of styling it and um, in this kind of way. And so I'll do something similar to this. I don't, it's not exactly how I'll style it, but it's close. Um, yeah, so I might put like a little like button or pin or something here so it actually stays put <laughs> and doesn't wander or untie itself. Um, but I think this with like a little 
cardigan, um, high-waisted jeans. I think it would be so cute. And all I did was um, like a triangular kind of granny, granny stripe crochet kind of thing. And same deal with the color changing. I just added a new color when the old color <laughs> ran out. I didn't wait until the end of a row to switch colors. Um, and you can't really tell. Like if you're really up close and you're looking at it and you're like counting, then you'll see like this side has one more row of a color than the other side does. But only in like one spot. <laughs> it's only like part of the row. So stuff like that doesn't really bother me because when you're just looking at it just like this, you can't really tell where the color changes are happening. <laughs> um, it looks like they're even rows, but really a color change happened like right here. <laughs> But it's okay. Um, yeah, so very cute. Very cute. No pattern. Just, yeah, no pattern. <laughs> I just kind of cast it on and then cast it off in the same evening. And again, this little like bandana kind of style. Um, La Bien Ami actually does have a pattern called Le, Le Bandana or Le Ban. I do not speak French even remotely. Um, so it's Le Bandana. I'm just going to say it with an English accent, not an English accent, an American accent. Um, and it's such a cute pattern. You may have seen it if you follow La Bien Ami on Ravelry or Instagram or anything like you've seen this pattern because it pops up all the time because I think it was published this year. Um, and she's just had so many different samples knit up in it. People are knitting this thing left and right. Uh, and so it's about this size and it often does get styled this way where it's just kind of tied around the neck and then kind of just shunked over to the side. Um, and then you've got your little ties just kind of like draping over one side. And I really love that. And I'm actually thinking about maybe knitting that pattern because uh, it'd be really, really nice for like a one skein thing or because I think it takes one skein of sport weight or something like that. But I've been thinking about knitting one of those. And after crocheting this, I kind of like it. It's kind of cute. And again, I think with like a cardigan, it'd be really cute. Or like a long dress. Not this one, but another kind of bandana type thing and like a color that would go with a lot of my dresses. That'd be cute. That would be cute. So this is my first of my granny stripe projects. I have more granny stripe projects to share with you guys. So I actually think I have three more granny stripe projects. So these two are basically the same. And again, I haven't trimmed my ends. So please excuse me. I've woven them in, but I have not trimmed them yet because I trim after, pardon, I trim my ends after I've blocked the item because I don't really want to risk with blocking those like little closely trimmed ends to just like pop out because things stretch and expand when you block it. So I just don't really want to risk like my little tail that I've woven in like popping out with blocking because the fabric has stretched and that kind of thing. So I just never trim it until after it's been blocked, but all the ends do get woven in before I block it because I want the ends to weave in. I want those woven in ends to block with it so that they stay put and they form like a memory of um, where they have been woven. I digress. So these are actually for a market that I'm probably doing. I talked to my local um, arts guild and they, they talked to me about teaching. Uh, crochet, uh, knitting, possibly spinning, maybe weaving at some point, uh, maybe yarn dyeing, although the yarn dyeing would be a little tricky to teach there because I do natural yarn dyeing. So that'd be a little hard to teach there because I would, anyway, to make the dyes, I would, I, I need like basically a kitchen. Um, and it takes kind of a while, <laughs> Uh, so I could probably teach a workshop, but I don't know, maybe not the yarn dyeing so much, but yeah, I am talking to them about teaching some classes there for fiber arts, which is really, really exciting. And, uh, while we were talking about it, um, 
and we went over some ideas for some classes that I would maybe teach this winter. They asked me about vending at their holiday market because their artists and their teachers and then some other local artists and crafts people in the area um, will get together and they'll do like a holiday market at the Arts Guild. So they asked me about that and I said, oh, that would be really nice. I'll let you know um, because their vendors don't have to apply for another several weeks. So I was just going to see what kind of stuff I could get together um, to vend. And if I've got enough stuff, then I would tell them, yeah, sure. I'd be happy to be a vendor. Um, I could sell handmade items, but then also um, hand dyed yarn and hand spun yarn. And that could be fun. So most of the items that I'm wanting to sell there would be crochet items. Very, very few knit items because knit, knitting takes so much longer. Um, I know that I'm not going to be like making a lot of money here. It's mostly just kind of recouping, <laughs> basically helping pay for my hobby a little bit. Um, so I would mostly be doing crochet items though, just to make it a little bit more, um, I guess, financially savvy. Uh, the crocheted items take a lot less time to make. And also it's cool that you can only hand make crochet items. You cannot machine make a crocheted item um, because of the way that it's done in knots versus with knitting it's done in loops. Uh, so crocheted items have to be handmade. You, you can't really buy them easily at the stores because um, unless they're being unethically sourced, <laughs> they're probably not going to be at a store. Uh, you would only get them from someone you know or making them yourself or getting them at a craft fair. So I figured it's fun to offer crochet because people, only people can hand make crochet. So what better, what better item to have for a craft fair? Uh, if you're fibery. <laughs> uh, so I made two granny stitch cowls. This is actually really cute. Part of me wants to keep this, but I don't need to. If it doesn't sell, then maybe I'll keep it. <laughs> Um, so we've got this one and this one, uh, was my first one that I did and it ended up being a little longer and I know a lot of people like it a little longer like this, but I am not one of those people. It actually doesn't look bad. It's not a bad length, but I do like mine a little bit wider and a little bit sh like, uh, narrower. Like, um, I like the circumference to be a little bit smaller so that it doesn't hang down so much. Um, although this does look cute and this would be very cute with like a, a jacket or a coat because you can just kind of scrunch it up like this. And these are made with Knit Picks Surrey. It's the upcycled Surrey alpaca yarn from Knit Picks. They've only got the four colors. So you've got this burgundy-ish color and then you've got this navy color. Each of these took two skeins and you can see the length difference here. So this one is a, a bit longer. I like this one more for the construction. So any future ones I'm doing, I'm doing with that stitch count. I think I chained um, 93 uh, and then I did like a granny stripe or a granny stitch with that until I ran out of yarn. This was like a 103 and then I just went in the round till I ran out of yarn. Um, and then I did like a little single crochet edging on both of them. This one I held fingering weight triple. And this one uh, I just took like something. This was from Scraps and then this one was um, just some sort of leftover. I think it was a Lion brand, maybe acrylic. That was just scrappy leftovers from something from years ago. Um, yes, so these I think are super, super cute and I am excited to, to crochet up uh, at least one more for the craft market the holiday craft market. So those will go in my booth. Uh, anything else to say about this? I don't think so. I can't remember the crochet hook that I used. I think it was a five millimeter. It may have been a little bigger because this is supposed to be worsted weight for the Surrey alpaca, but it, it works up a little fluffier than that. So I sized up my hook size, um, but I'm excited about these. And I think I'm also going to be crocheting some hats 
I'd love to crochet some mittens and I would love to embroider on them. I'll talk a little bit about embroidery on mitts in a bit. Um, but yeah, more cowls, hats, mittens. I think I was going to do a, a, try to do a couple of uh, like fingering weight crocheted lace shawls. Those would be a little bit like bigger ticket items because those would take longer. Um, but yeah, so I wanted to have a little bit of an assortment of handmade items that were ready to wear for all of the people that either don't craft themselves or maybe they don't, well, who don't crochet themselves or maybe they just don't have time or maybe that's, that's not the kind of item they would want to make for themselves. They'd ha be happy to wear it, but they wouldn't have fun making it. So wanted to make ready-made items for people that weren't going to crochet it for themselves, but I'm also going to have hand dyed yarn, naturally, naturally dyed yarn, um, and hand spun yarn for people who are into fiber arts themselves. So I'm going to have a little bit of a variety, but it'll be a very fibery booth. I think I might be the only fiber artist there. Um, I'm not sure, but I think I might be the only fiber artist at this craft market. There might be one other. I went to this market many years ago, like many years ago, and I cannot remember. I know there was one person that had shawls, but I want to say that it was, um, they were like fabric, like cotton or silk or something that she had dyed or I don't remember anything that was like woven or crocheted or knit at that market that year, but I don't know. It was a long time ago. <laughs> so, okay, next finished object so that I stop getting distracted and I keep things moving. We have a little shrug that I crocheted. This is not granny stripe. This is, it's double crocheted. Yeah, I think this is called, is it like the flat iron stitch or like the iron stitch? I can't remember, but basically it's double crochets and you just do it singly and then you do it doubly um, to get kind of like, I don't know, like an alternating kind of like fabric here. And then if we've got a ribbing, crocheted ribbing that was, I think this is a single crocheted rib, which I think looks really nice and neat. It makes a lovely, dense kind of rib. It, I, I liked this ribbing quite a lot, and it lays very flat and nice. <clears throat> this pattern was the Sidewalk Shrug by um, Hooked on Homemade Happiness is the blog, and you can get it for free on the blog. So Hooked on Homemade Happiness, the Sidewalk Shrug. I made this in three different yarns. Um, it took a whole skein of Malabrigo whole grain. Uh, I did the fingering weight held double because you needed worsted for this pattern. And then the pinkish, the pinkish yarn is Knit Picks Upcycled Alpaca Worsted in linen. This is not the Surrey worsted. This is just their alpaca upcycled worsted, which is um, alpaca wool and acrylic and it's um upcycled from you know leftover stuff at their mill at knit picks and then the third yarn that I did was this gray and this was a yarn that I got at a farmer's market a couple years ago I can't remember what a sheep type but um yeah basically the the shepherd was there and he sends off his fleeces to a mill and it's mill spun, um, but from the fleece from a, f a farmer that lives in Madison, Wisconsin. <laughs> so this is the sidewalk shrug and I made this because as the weather is transitioning, it's hard to put stuff on when you're on camera because you have to stay seated, but also not like lunge at the camera. <laughs> um, it's difficult. Um, so yeah, great, great shrug. I did the, what size did I do? I want to say that I chained on for the medium size. I didn't put in my notes what size I did. I want to say that I chained on for the medium size. So like, you know, 
lengthwise. No, I think I did do the large. I'm almost positive I did the large because I wanted to make sure that it was like long enough for, I didn't want something like short. I wanted it to come to like my elbows. So I'm pretty sure that's what I did. Um, and then I think that I may have done like the medium number of repeats for like this part, maybe. Or maybe I just did large overall, I can't remember. But as you can see, like it's plenty big. So like if I did the medium or the large, it's still like per plenty big for me. So I'm kind of drapey and nice. Um, so I needed something for the transitional weather. I wear a lot of long dresses and um, a lot of them are either short sleeved or just straps. So I wanted something to just kind of throw on when it's a little chilly, but isn't really chilly enough for an actual sweater or cardigan. Uh, this was perfect. So this is a very good neutral for me. I wear a lot of pink, so uh, the pink functions as a neutral in my wardrobe. And then this whole grain color from Malabrigo, which is one of my very favorite colors. It's like my favorite neutral. Um, I'm just knocking things over. Uh, this is great for the ribbing. And then um, yeah, I've just got this gray that kind of, I just pulled the gray because I was pulling yarns from Stash and these three coordinated fine and we're gonna be very wearable with my wardrobe. So that's why I made that decision. And I think it looks, I think it looks nice. Very easy to just throw on and wear with a dress and I'm just warm enough. It doesn't, make me super, super cozy. Um, it just keeps me warm enough as the fall temperatures are kind of coming in. So I just kind of did a little bit of like an alternating of the colors towards the middle to kind of just get them to transition <laughs> nicely. Um, and it's about half and half there in the back. And honestly, when I'm wearing this, mostly what you see is the pink because this is kind of like falling kind of like falls down to where you only see like a little bit of this gray. So it actually like, it wears very nicely with that color transition. I was really pleased with that because I didn't know how it was gonna work, but it came out just fine. This was quick. It took me less than a week. Um, crochet tends to be quick, uh, but you know, crocheting at some of these bigger gauges like worsted weight and that kind of thing tends to be cr pretty quick. So I think this is my last, my last crocheted finished object. And I'm really excited about this. This is my other granny, this is what started my granny square kick. <laughs> so this is my, or my granny stitch kick. This is my very first time doing the granny, the granny stitch. And as you can see, it's stuck because then I made three more projects right afterwards. This is my Halloween shawl for this year. I guess this is my only Halloween shawl. I've never made one before, but this is my Halloween shawl. And the colors are just lovely. Let me show you those a little closer up. This was a set of minis, of Halloween minis, that I got from, let me reference my notes. Haunted Woods mini set from Tsuki Mountain. They're on Etsy and Tsuki is spelled T-S-U-K-I and then mountain is just spelled like mountain. Um, but they are on Etsy. So the Haunted Woods mini set and this was a fingering weight mini set. I got this mini set last year and then um, just got busy. Oh, I was busy doing the MCAL, the Stephen West <laughs> MCAL last year, so I didn't, that's a whole other thing. Um, we'll talk about that in a minute, <laughs> but um, I was busy doing that, so I never got to make any of my Halloween stuff last year. I take that back, that's not true. I did make one pair of socks. Um, so I just went ahead and I did this in September this year, and I did this in about 24 hours. Oh, it was while I was sick. I got, I got sick in September, and I was sick for like a week and a half, and um, yeah, I couldn't go to work for a week. I basically just sat in the chair and didn't really move for like a week. <laughs> uh, I only got up to feed myself, um, and make tea and that kind of thing. It was a little pathetic. 
but I got a lot of crochet done. So I got this done in 20, less than 24 hours because <laughs> I started it like one evening and then I'd finished it the next afternoon. And obviously I slept in between there. So this was pretty quick. Uh, the granny stitch goes pretty quick. And for the pink yarns, I just pulled them from stash. So the, the main pink that you're seeing this here is a Knit Picks yarn. It is the Knit Picks Stroll Fingering in Seashell. Uh, it's their tonal. So Knit Picks Stroll Fingering Tonal, because they've got different, they've got like hand painted and that kind of thing, uh, tonal in the seashell colorway. And then this neon pink is just uh, scraps left over from my mystery shawl from last year, my twists and turns. Uh, Stephen West mystery shawl from last year. These are the little neon scraps left over from this baby. And I am just super pleased with how it turned out. And then I've got this other like kind of orangey pink that was scrapped from something else from a different project and I put it towards the border. So super pleased with this. I just think it's perfect for what I'm wanting. I love pink and for Halloween I tend to I do like orange and I like Halloween colors, but I don't typically like the like kind of, I don't know what's going on with my bangs. I'm growing out my hair. I, I feel like I mentioned this like every podcast episode lately. I'm growing out my hair from like a pixie cut and it just, I mean, it just does what it wants. I have no idea. It's fine. I'm just going to let it do whatever it does and hope for the best. Okay. I'm not going to mess with it anymore. Um, if it looks silly, then I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, so I don't really love kind of like the traditional Halloween colors, like orange, purple, black, green, gray. I feel like those are the normal, those are the usual kind of colors for Halloween. Not really my favorite, um, but I love orange and pink for Halloween. Uh, orange, pink, and gray for Halloween is perfect, so that's what we've got here. So this is my Halloween shawl and I just really couldn't be any happier with it. I love it in the grainy stripes. I think that that just makes it look very, very charming. Um, and I think it is so incredibly cute. So here we have it. So cute. I love this. So yeah, anything else to say? Fingering weight. This I did use a pattern. So let me tell you the pattern. That would be important information, right? Okay, so the pattern I used for this was half a granny square shawl. So, and this is a free pattern on Ravelry. It's the half a granny square shawl by Church Mouse Yarns and Tees. Again, all of this information is in the description down below the video. Um, but yeah, that was this guy. So after I did this, I knew how to do like a little triangular kind of uh, granny stripe thing. So I just did that for my little like bandana as well. Um, but I just, I love this so much. I just think it's so incredibly cute. And I just think it's perfect. And I think I'm going to wear it. <laughs> I think I'm just going to wear it for the rest of the podcast because it makes me really happy. How cute. Okay. It's so cute. All right. So I think I've got just a couple more finished objects to share with you guys. This guy is little and I love him. Look at this guy. How cute is he? So cute. I love him. He's so cute. His name is Newt, so spelled with a G. And he's been my little friend. Like, he's my little companion. I kind of take him around the house with me sometimes and just set him down <laughs> uh, so he can hang out with me while I'm doing stuff. Um, most of the time, he sits next to my knitting chair and keeps me company while I'm crafting. But I love him. He is amazing. He sits perfectly flat. So cute. I love him. 
the pattern for this is Imagine Landscapes. They've got lots of gnome patterns, and this particular pattern is no fun like gnome fun. Um, and the no fun is spelled with a G, so G-N-O, no fun, like gnome fun. Uh, they designed this pattern, I believe, to be just a very streamlined version of their gnomes. Uh, and this really is a no frills, streamlined kind of gnome. I've knit um, one other gnome from them. It was the gnome de plume. This guy, actually. So this is my gnome de plume. So cute with his little leaf hat. Oh my goodness, they're friends. Oh, they're cute. <laughs> I can't with these gnomes. They're so cute. Okay, so um, this guy, as you can tell, with his hat and his leaf and his beautiful, like, leafy beard, he was a little less streamlined. Um, he's got a little bit more detail going on, so he took a bit more effort to make. He took a little longer to make. He actually took significantly longer to make. Um, he was well worth it, though. I love him. This guy took like two, two and a half hours to make. Very streamlined. Uh, it, you start from the top and you just work your way to the bottom. You don't have to seam um, anything here. The hat and the body are all one piece. Um, you just change your colors here. And then you've got your little like bottom as well. You don't have to seam, it just decreases. And then you've got your little arms. You've got your little nose and beard, which is also all knit in one piece. So you don't have to attach stuff. So this guy's really streamlined and um, this is the biggest size. There are three different sizes and styles of gnome within the one pattern, which is great. Um, and they give you tips on how to help him like stably sit flat so he's not falling over. It's, it's just a great pattern. It's basically three patterns in one uh, and they're quick little gnomes. So I've already made two of these. <laughs> I don't have the other one though because I made it for my friend. She's She had a hard week, so I made her one in her favorite colors. And then I made Newt, um, and he is my little gnome friend, and I love him. So he's going to hang out right here for the rest of the podcast and keep us all company. <sighs> I love him, and I don't think there's anything else to say about that. Uh, this gnome was knit basically on worsted weight yarn. Um, which also makes him a little quicker. My gnome de plume was knit on fingering weight. Um, so they really were very thoughtful um, and clever in the way they wrote this gnome pattern to where you can you can crank out uh, some gnomes <laughs> with this pattern. And it's actually something I am considering for the craft market as well. Um, it's just making a few of these gnomes and seeing if anybody buys them. Because again, it took me like two and a half hours and I think they're really precious and I might do a couple in like holiday colors um, for myself, but then also for the market. We'll see. I love this chartreuse mug. Like I need to knit something with chartreuse. I don't have chartreuse yarn. I've been on the lookout for like a good chartreuse yarn for like two years now. And I just haven't seen one that's really like spoken to my soul. Um, but as soon as I do, best believe I'm going to be knitting something chartreuse. Probably will have pink in it too, <laughs> if we're being honest, but maybe not. I don't always do pink, but speaking of pink, my last, fin I think this is the last finished object. This is more hand spun yarn. I'll just share it with you guys very quickly. This was my tour de fleece spin because I'm a little late in, in the game and showing it to you, but I did finish this for tour de fleece. Um, this was all I spun during tour de fleece because I had a very sprained ankle and spinning just really wasn't something I could do a whole lot of. Um, but I managed to get this done for a sweater spin. This is beautiful merino and silk blend. Really beautiful. Um, it's just gorgeously soft. It feels wonderful. It's It's got a lot of silk in it. So it's gonna be very drapey and I'm really excited. What my plan is, is to do a yoked sweater and to do it kind of like this, where the yoke is this color and then the body and the sleeves are this color. And I might set aside just a little bit of this to do a little accent on the cuffs. 
um, for the sleeves, perhaps. So it's going to be a little cropped yoke sweater, and I'm really excited. This is about a worsted weight yarn. I think it's going to be really lovely, and this is some of my favorite hand spun that I've done. Maybe just because this was the first time I'd completed a sweater's quantity of hand spun all at one time. <laughs> so go me um yeah super super happy with this I think it's gonna be a lovely sweater for the winter I can't wait to cast that on and show that to you guys um I'm not casting it on immediately but it is in the fairly fairly near future I want to I want to knit it up this fall I think so that it's ready for me to wear for the winter um oh maybe I'll try to do it in November so it can kind of be like my holiday sweater that would be so nice. Oh, that would be so nice. I know that's crinkly and loud. I apologize. So next, um, so works in progress, right? Let's get on to works in progress. Finally, 50 minutes in, and we're getting to works in progress. I do have um, another finished object, but I'll share it with you guys next time. It's that little kimono baby cardigan. I still haven't attached the buttons. So I'll get the buttons attached to that and share it with you all with the buttons on it. If you want to look at the last episode of the podcast, I do share that cute little cardigan, but it, just, it doesn't have the buttons on it. So we got all of this done. My double take T is still a work in progress, but I didn't make any really noticeable progress on it since the last podcast. So I don't have it with me to show you guys. It's on pause right now. Um, Sorry, my neck is kind of, my neck is kind of hurty. Um, yeah, the Double Take Tea by Espastrico that I'm making is a little bit on hold just because I've got other things I'm focusing on right now. And it's sort of my like just take and go easy knitting instead of socks. I'm, I'm doing that. So it's, it's my travel project. Um, so I'm not really in a hurry to get it done or anything. Um, Let's share this next. So, oh gosh. Oh gosh, I'm sorry if that was loud. My book fell. So let's share this. This is living in my beautiful Halloween-y bag by Puff Stitch on Etsy. I think on Etsy, you type in Puff Stitch 1. We got that chartreuse. Love a chartreuse. Oh, so cute. Yeah, so we've got our little Halloween cats. They're doing magic with their little frog companion, their magical frog companion. It's so cute. Um, I'm a big fan of puff stitch bags. I have a lot of them. <laughs> she has wonderful fabrics and they're very like thoughtfully made with the waxed canvas bottom. Um, they stand up nicely and they stay open. So, and there's always a pocket inside. So they're just very like thoughtfully made, streamlined. The way she does the handle is great because as you can see, like no effort, I just swoop my hand in and it stays open perfectly so I can knit on the go while this stays open. I just really can't say enough good things about her bags. They're very well made and um, she picks beautiful fabrics. And I think she's a wonderfully talented maker. So Puff Stitch on Etsy. What I have living in here is my Harvest Cardigan. So I've been needing, meaning to make a cardigan for a while and I wanted one in a neutral color um, and I'm finally doing it. So just one day I just decided I'm gonna cast on a cardigan and I think it's gonna be this one and I just went. <laughs> I did not really think this out very thoughtfully um, for very long. I just started and I'm very glad I did. Uh, this is the Harvest Cardigan by Tin Can Knits. It comes in a lot of sizes. I can't remember how many sizes, but a lot of sizes. Tin Can Knits, I think, tends to be pretty good with um, the range of sizes that they offer. This is a free pattern by Tin Can Knits. And I'm knitting the size medium large. So they've got like, a, <laughs> just for the mediums, there are three mediums. There's small, medium, medium, and medium large. 
how great is that? They have a lot of sizes in this pattern. So I'm doing the medium large. I did it based on bust size and how much um, positive ease I wanted. And I thought that the medium large would get me something that was not fitted. I wanted a little bit of positive ease um, so that bordering on the almost kind of slouchy-ish side of things. Uh, Cause again, this is gonna go over long dresses, um, like a top with long skirts, possibly tunics, but we'll see if I'm doing tunics and throwing on a cardigan, it's probably going to be a longer tun longer cardigan uh, to kind of match that tunic length. So this is probably mostly for like high-waisted jeans and a little crop top or more than likely long dresses because I wear them all the time. So this is my harvest cardigan. You can see it's got this great garter panel as the um, collar and then for your button band you can do this with or without buttons it has instructions for both and it's just lovely I would be almost done with it except I ran out of yarn so um, my yarn should be arriving I think tomorrow I was able to find a seller on Etsy who did sell the yarn that I needed this is Malabrigo Rios in the whole grain colorway. Again, that whole grain colorway is my very favorite neutral. It's a little bit gray, a little bit mushroom, a little bit beigey. It's got a little bit of pink tone in there, or mauve. Um, it's just, I think it's the perfect neutral. And I think it'll be really nice. I don't think it'll wash me out because it's a cardigan, so you'll be able to see whatever I'm wearing, you know, under it for a little pop of color. But I ran out of yarn, so this is two skeins of Malabrigo Rios. I ordered another three skeins because I wanted to get free shipping, <laughs> um, and they were on sale. So I was like, three skeins of Malabrigo Rios, 25% off and free shipping? Yeah. And I only got three skeins, so be very <laughs> proud of me that I didn't order more. I was like, I'm just getting what I need and then the free shipping, because um, getting like a skein extra is not going to go to waste because... This is my favorite neutral. I'm gonna I'm gonna use it for something. Maybe pair it with something like a neon pink or something. How cute would that be? Um, these are my little needle stoppers. These are also from Puff Stitch. And um, look how cute they are. They're little nitty foxes. Oh my gosh. So cute. Let me see if I can. There we go. So cute. I just love them. So they're keeping my stitches safe. Oh, so cute. Yeah, nice little raglan style. You can see the raglan increases here. And Malabrigo Rios is just beautifully soft. This is a wonderful tonal bordering on a neutral variegated yarn. And I just think it's going to be lovely. I don't have a whole lot farther to go on the body because I am doing a cropped cardigan. I've already got one buttonhole done. So we'll see if I we'll see if I do full length sleeves or if I do like three quarter length sleeves. I might do full length sleeves just because I don't have a good weight cardigan that's cropped that has full length sleeves. I don't have that in my wardrobe. So I might just go ahead and go full sleeves on these so that I get I think that'll fill a gap in my wardrobe. Um, and I can wear this with literally everything because this color is perfect. Perfect. The only reason I'm not knitting on this is because I don't have the yarn. <laughs> so I originally was going to use um, this yarn, which is just from Stash, and I do not know the color way or the dyer because this is this has been in my stash for several years now and has has not had a ball band because I think they wound it up at the shop. I don't know. So several years, I don't know what this is. Uh, but I was going to pair that with it. But after I saw how the neutral, how this um, whole grain colorway was knitting up, ugh, I just was like, no, I want the whole cardigan to be this color. I was trying to bust stash and instead I got more yarn. <laughs> but that happens sometimes. And actually, that's the first time that's ever happened to me. Usually if I'm knitting from stash, I just knit from stash. And if I um, have a, like a quantity for a project, like I typically have enough for that 
project and if I just need a tiny bit extra I just pull from stash. I have never actually ordered yarn for a project I'm in the middle of because I was running out of yarn. This is the first for me so part of me feels like I have crossed over some sort of like milestone um, and uh, <laughs> this is an experience a lot of knitters and crocheters and crafters have uh, and I haven't had it yet so yay I'm part of the club. Um, so I'm excited it'll be here tomorrow I don't have too much longer to wait. Yay. I love that cardigan. I can't wait to show it to you guys. Hopefully it'll be done in the next podcast and I can show it to you then as a finished object. How amazing would that be? Let's see here. Okay. We're getting close to the end. This is a new cast on. I cast this on for my husband he has never asked me for a sweater. He has never wanted a sweater. I obviously have offered to knit him a sweater because I'm a knitter and I want to knit a sweater for my husband. Um, maybe that's not obvious. Maybe not everybody wants to do that, but like I wanted to knit a sweater for my husband, but he's very warm blooded and, um, he does not get cold. He, yeah, he just loves hand knit socks. So I knit him socks fairly regularly and then I've, I've knit him a, a scarf. I knit him some uh, fingerless or like short fingered um, gloves for fishing last year. I've knit him a couple of things, but it's usually accessory like. Well, he finally wanted a sweater and I was like, oh, glory be. <laughs> My husband wants a hand knit sweater. Point me in the direction of the sweater that you want and I will make it for you. Well, what does he want but petite knits Moby's sweater which has cables he wanted a cabled sweater and I so I went through patterns on Ravelry looking for a cabled sweater that I wouldn't hate making because I am not a cable knitter I'm just not I'm just not a cable knitter I loved doing these antler cables for my twists and turns but these are the first that was the first time I'd ever done cables and I did enjoy it, but I only enjoyed it because it was the first time and it was new and exciting. And um, I liked how the cables were looking. I like the antler cables. I think they're pretty. But the actual cabling itself, where you have to put the cable in, you have to hold it, and then you, then you have to knit the other ones, but then you knit off the cable needle, but don't let anything fall off. And I don't like that process. <laughs> if you love knitting cables and you just have a wonderful process for it and it just makes the process like so much more enjoyable for you, please share below uh, because I would love to know your secrets. I don't love knitting cables. So when he said he wanted a cable sweater and he wanted like cables, he wanted like all over texture. Well, not like all over tech, but he wanted texture all over. He wanted kind of like a classic looking cabled sweater for fishing in. So, found some patterns on Ravelry. I showed them to him. This is the one he landed on, which was the one I was leaning towards because it doesn't have too many cables. <laughs> um, if you've seen this pattern by Petite Knit, uh, which you likely have because it's Petite Knit, so her patterns are everywhere, but then this is a popular one. Um, this is the Moby sweater. Let me turn off the ring light so that's not annoying on there. So this is the Moby sweater by Petite Knit. This is the Moby sweater man. There is a woman version. And my guess is that the they are graded for the different body shapes. So this probably has some wider shoulders and takes into account like the wider chest, wider shoulders, possibly um, a little bit wider on the sleeves too. That would be my guess as to what the difference is between the man and the woman, the, the men's and the women's pattern. I think there's also probably like a Moby children. I know she does child's versions of a lot of her patterns. So this is what we're knitting for him. And you can see that it's just this one cable like on either side. It's just got the two cables. These are actually pretty easy. Um, and this is just texture. I think this is like moss or broken moss or something like that texture on most of the sweater. But yeah, it's only got the two, like the cable here and then the cable here. So not too bad. Um, and it's a beautiful, beautiful sweater. 
So I'm actually pretty excited. I'm excited to be knitting him a sweater. I'm excited to be knitting this pattern because it's a beautiful pattern. It's my first petite knit pattern. Uh, and I'll show you guys what I've got so far. Uh, it starts with like the back yoke for the men's. And this is the color that he chose. He wanted this like rich purpley blue. Yeah, so you can kind of see the texture here. Yeah, this part's really, it's actually really fun. Um, it's knit using charts. And I don't do tons of charted knitting, but I'm enjoying it. This is Cascade, oh goodness. Oh my goodness. I thought I put the ball band in here and I thought I was being so good. I thought I was being a good podcaster. But I took the ball band out and I put it somewhere else. Oh no. Whoops. I'm sorry, you all. I'll I'll put it in the description down below the video though. This is a cascade yarn. It's their superwash um, DK. And I'll find out what it's actually called and um, the colorway name. But you can see that it's a dark, rich blue with a bit of a purple heathering. So he he picked out this color, he picked out this pattern you know, from the patterns that I uh, selected for him, I guess, and the yarns that I selected, but he chose, I gave him options and this is what he chose. And this has been really fun. It's working up nicely. I was worried that the texture wasn't going to really show on this dark yarn, but it's actually showing up just fine. You know, from farther back here, it's hard to tell, but it's just how it's going to be with a darker yarn. Um, yeah, so it's, it's showing up nicely and this will look lovely on him with his complexion and he has dark hair, like dark hair, like black hair, almost black. It's like the darkest brown. Um, it looks black until he gets in the sun and then you can kind of see like a little bit of the, the brown tint to it. So yeah, this will look great with his complexion. He will look beautiful and he'll be cozy and warm. I picked a DK pattern for him since he does tend to be pretty hot. I didn't want to do something any heavier than a DK because I didn't want him to just burn up, but I didn't want to do anything lighter than a DK for me because I didn't want this to take six years to knit. So <laughs> I think a DK, very textured, cabled sweater for him, feels like a gift. <laughs> I'm gonna see if I can get it done for the winter holidays. Um, it might turn into like a Valentine's Day present. <laughs> So we'll just see how long it takes. I'm not really in a big rush. And I told him, don't expect this to be done quickly. This is not my usual style of knitting because of the cables and because of the charts. And so it's going to take me longer. And he's a huge man. So I think that this is, I think for his size, it's either nine or 10 skeins. Uh, so either 900 or 1,000 grams of DK weight yarn. So it's going to take me a bit. That is going to take me a bit to knit. And I think it's knit on US 6s. Yeah, it's knit on US 6s. So it's going to take me a minute. But it's fine. Uh, I love him. So, and I'm really happy he finally asked me to knit him a sweater. I am excited about it. I, I feel like it seems like I'm full of chagrin, but I'm actually, I am excited about it. Uh, so it's a beautiful pattern and I think it's going to be a beautiful sweater and he's a beautiful man. So I think it's just going to be a beauty all around and it's going to be a beautiful experience. So I'm, I am happy about it. And it actually is really nice for, um, for some mindful knitting because it is very different from what I normally do. So I can fully immerse myself in the experience. Um, if I'm knitting from the chart, I, if I'm knitting from a chart, I typically am doing it undistracted. So I don't have music. I don't have a video playing or an audiobook, like nothing. I'm knitting in silence and I'm reading the chart and I'm paying attention to my stitches and it's a beautiful, mindful experience. Um, kind of first thing in the morning is really nice. Um, when the world is quiet and all I have is my chart and my yarn, I really do like that. So it's just going to take a while and I think I'm a little stressed with the size and I feel like I want to make sure it fits him, but I measured him four, five times 
and I changed my mind about the size three times <laughs> and I feel very comfortable with the size that I chose to make for him based on his preference for ease and um, his measurements. Um, and I measured him many different ways, shirt on, shirt off, arms up, arms down, um, in the morning, in the evening. Um, and I did it over the course of several weeks and I took all those measurements and I made a decision based on that. So I think it's going to be really good and it is fun. Um, I am now at the part where I need to start using the cable needle and I've been putting it off for like days because I just don't want to do the cable needle, but I'll watch a YouTube video on cabling and I uh, will re-familiarize myself and who knows maybe after the sweater I will love cables because I love these cables but I didn't really love doing them I was very happy when that section was finished in the MCAL last year all right so last work in progress I think yeah last work in progress to share with you guys um I'm hosting my own make along this year for the Stephen West mystery shawl or the mystery cow m cow mystery knit along so i talked about this in the last podcast we do have a few people that are in our little make along group now and we are having a lot of fun uh and we are going to be having a knit night tonight on zoom at 7 p.m eastern time so if you want to be part of our knit night i know it's short notice but if you want to join in let me know um like either, uh, so direct message me or email me. You can direct message me on Ravelry or Instagram, or you can email me and I can send you the Zoom link and you can join us for knit night tonight or a sit and stitch because it's not just knitting. So the make along I'm hosting is for all of us who love the Stephen West mystery knit along, but <laughs> maybe we are making the shawl, but maybe we just want to spectate. I'm calling it the spectator make along because I loved doing the mystery knit along last year, but it also stressed me out quite a bit more than I was anticipating. I think it was mostly the chevron section <laughs> as the first clue that really got me. But um, in any case, uh, I didn't really wanna do that again. Um, I wanted to be part of the mystery knit along atmosphere and enjoy kind of like the party time because it's like all of November or all of October is like MCAL season and it's so much fun and it was so much fun last year um but the amount of knitting was unattainable for me like the amount of knitting that was required every week to keep up I know there's not really a keep up with it like you just you know embrace your your own pace as Steven says um but for me, it was a little hard to not feel pressure and stress. Um, it took me 10 months to finish the shawl. And I don't love that as somebody who tends to just like get their finished objects like out. Um, I am a process knitter, but I tend to not be working on tons of things all at one time because I like to finish the stuff I'm working on. So the fact that this took me so long wasn't my favorite. Um, I... I liked the mystery aspect of it, but this is not a shawl design that I will tend to wear a whole lot because it's just not a style I will tend to wear a whole lot. And I like to make things that I'll use. So for all of those reasons, I decided I'm just gonna spectate this year. I'm gonna watch everybody make their M, M shawls, their mystery shawls, <laughs> their geo gradient shawls. And I'm going to watch all of Steven's videos um, every Thursday morning, I'm going to watch his video and knit, but I'm not knitting geo gradient. I am knitting another of his patterns. I'm knitting the dotted rays shawl, um, which is, has been around for years. Um, it's an old design of his. Let's see if I can pull it up. Um, and it's very like soothing. It's like a garter and eyelet lace shawl. And it's just, extremely unstressful <laughs> so it's this guy you've probably seen it this is the dotted rays and I pulled from stash um a fade so this is a stripey version of it which will be kind of similar to my fade I've gotten through one of the mini skeins each mini skein is 20 grams uh, I've gotten through one and I've started the second one today. And this is my little dotted rays that I've got going on. 
I did cast on the night before instead of the morning of cast on for the MCAL. Um, and I've been taking this with me everywhere. This is all I've been knitting on for two days and I've been taking it with me everywhere. So like every time I get five, 10, 15 minutes, I'm knitting on this shawl. <laughs> so I've gotten uh, 36 grams. I've knit 36 grams <laughs> of, of 200 so far. <laughs> so I'm making good time. <laughs> But I love it, and it's so soothing. Um, the yarn that I'm using for this is Emma's yarn, and it's one of her theme packs. This is the Sweetheart theme pack. So it's this beautiful fade from that cream into, like, pinks and yellows, and then all the way into this, like, beautiful, beautiful dark burgundy kind of wine color. Gorgeous. Um, so much fun. And as someone who loves color and who gets bored kind of easily, doing something like this with 10 colors is just perfect. Um, so the soothing garter and eyelet pattern, uh, is just very relaxing. Um, this was not relaxing. <laughs> this was a roller coaster of emotions. Um, this is very relaxing. So I'm watching everybody do their geo gradient. I loved seeing the first clue yesterday while I was working on my um, alternative Stephen West pattern. And I'm making a gradient Stephen West shawl, but it's not the mystery shawl everyone else is making. Um, and I'm just loving it and it's so much fun. And we have a chat, a group chat on Instagram right now um, where several of us are just sharing our progress with our projects that we're doing as well as our commentary on the clues as they come out <laughs> and our thoughts about people's colors. Um, I have some favorite color combinations that have come out from some dyers and some makers and I'm just I'm loving seeing them knit up. Um, it's a lot of fun and the, the spectator make along that I'm hosting very casual. It's just a group of us that are making along together as we watch everybody do their geo, geo gradients. Um, and we all love Stephen West. Um, some of us are doing Stephen West patterns. Some of us are not. Some of us are knitting, um, but it's also fine to do crochet or weaving. Um, just really whatever. It's, it's just a fun way to be part of the MCAL season and um, excitement. Uh, but in an extremely unstressful way. I might do the mystery knit along next year. I don't know. Um, I might knit the geo gradient at some point because clue one, um, there are two versions of clue one. There's like a, his um, kind of default one. And then he did like a beginner friendly kind of version of clue one. And I might do that one just because it looks less tedious to me. <laughs> um, I don't think clue one is particularly tedious just in general, but for me and what I like to do with my knitting, it would feel tedious for me. Um, his kind of like, I don't know, his uh, like less involved version, his like beginner friendly version looks more fun for me um, for the way that I like, the style I like to knit with in. So I might do it next year. I might do the geo gradient at some point in the coming year. Um, who knows? Like maybe we'll get to clue two or clue three and I'll be like, oh my gosh, I love it and I can't stand it. I'm casting it on now. I don't know. Um, but for right now, I'm knitting my dotted rays shawl by Stephen West and I am adoring the process. Absolutely adoring it. And I know I'm going to wear this a lot. You've seen my color palette. Like this is something I'm going to wear a lot. I wear a lot of neutrals and I wear a lot of pink. And I like neon pink. <laughs> there's not neon pink in this gradient, but, um, or this fade, but, uh, there's a lot of neutrals and a lot of pink. <laughs> so I got two of my bases covered. I think it's going to be completely beautiful and I'm very excited about it. So yeah, if you want to join in on the make along, let me know. We've got a group on Ravelry for it. Um, it's just in the mindful knitter pod, um, page on Ravelry. We've got a group in there and we've got a chat for the make along. Um, the chat's not very active thus far because most of us are chatting on Instagram. Uh, so you are very welcome to message me on Ravelry or message me on Instagram if you want to be part of the group chat on Instagram because it is really fun. <laughs> We're just giving each other like updates kind of like throughout the day, which is really fun. It's like I'm getting to knit with my friends all day long. 
um, which to me is kind of what like a make along or knit along is, or ideally <laughs> is for me. Um, and, uh, cause even if I'm not knitting, like I can get on Instagram, like during a little break in the day and get in the chat and get an update on what people are doing or what their thoughts are for, for the make along. Um, it's just really fun. So yeah, you can message me on Instagram if you want to join in there. Um, or if you want to chat in the group on Ravelry, go for it. Um, so fun times. That's our make along. That's my work in progress for that shawl. Um, I have a upcoming project that I'm going to start either today or tomorrow. Uh, this is for hand, for spinning on my spinning wheel and for my, yeah, for my hand spun yarn, I do use a spinning wheel. I have a, um, Ashford Kiwi three. Uh, so it's a double treadle castle style wheel and I love it. Drop spindling is not my favorite thing. Although I did get a new drop spindle this spring and, um, like a spinning expert uh, kind of walked me through drop spinning and the way that she taught it was just lovely and it was a really fun experience. So I might be doing some more drop spindling as time goes on because that was much more enjoyable than me trying to teach myself from a book several years ago. <laughs> learning to spin from a book is not the same as learning from a person who is talking to you. Certainly not even close to the same as a person who's sitting right next to you and can like show you with their hands and their real time words and feedback. So that was so much more effective as far as learning experiences go. So anyway, my hand spun though, uh, the vast majority of it, basically all of it is done on my spinning wheel. I have never spun from a bat before. This will be my first time. So I'm gonna be spinning up this lovely bat. I did purchase it this from the same person that I purchased my drop spindle from. It's a beautiful drop spindle. It's, it's an acrylic, like poured acrylic, and it has like glitter and like dried flowers and some little animal bones. It's all foraged materials. And she makes these gorgeous drop spindles. Um, but yeah, this is a bat that she made. It's got some uh, Stellina. Um, and then just, I think she just said wool. I think it was just like a mix of different wools. I don't think there was any particular one. Um, it does feel like a soft rustic. So this almost to me feels like a Coriadale. This might be a Coriadale, but I'm not positive. So don't quote me. Uh, yeah. So I'm going to spin this up into some yarn. I think I'm going to thread ply it. Uh, I'll show it to you guys when it's done, but I'm excited. Sparkly. And I don't know if this is a yarn that I would personally use, even though the colors are perfect for me. I don't know how I feel about the sparkliness. So I'm gonna spin it up and see. Um, and if it looks like a yarn that I would use, then I will probably um, chain ply it. If it doesn't look like a yarn that I would use, I will probably thread ply it and then sell it at the craft market or the holiday market. So that's my next spin. And I'm excited about that because I've never spun from a bat. So I think that'll be really fun. Uh, and then my last item is my acquisition. Oh my goodness. Okay. I got it. You have probably seen this on social media. If you do a lot of fibery stuff on social media, this is the line of publishing embroidery on knits book. I pre-ordered this when I saw it. This is the first book I've gotten from Lina Publishing. It's the first, this is the first thing I've ever purchased from Lina Publishing. And this is a truly beautiful book. It is full of just great information. Um, a lot of really good information. Um, it talks about different types of thread, different um, embroidering on different types of fabrics. Um, the photography in this is absolutely stunning. Absolutely stunning. Oh, so it has so much information about the materials, about being thoughtful of like embroidering on knits versus cotton versus other materials. Um, about like, it even goes into different ways and how to use your embroidery hoop correctly, which you, you know, you think you just pop the fabric in and you go, but um, it has information on that. 
Uh, and then, you know, information on embroidering with yarn versus thread or other materials. Embroidering with ribbon. Um, so many different, <laughs> so many different pieces of information. Um, it is really very, very thoughtful. And then, of course, it has the actual, like, patterns themselves. So, that's amazing. Um, yeah, it has different ideas for... It has, you know, descriptions about the patterns and what the inspiration was or the meaning behind them. Um, ideas for using them. So, like, different ways to, like, either position them or different um, types of garments or etc. Different ways to use the patterns. Uh, it says recommended sequence of stitching. So, not only does it have the pattern like for which stitches and where, but like what she recommends as far as which ones to do first. So you get a very like smooth kind of look and then optional extras. And that's for each of them <laughs> um, or for a lot of them. Oh, okay. She's just got notes. She's also got hoop notes. So some of them, she has specific ideas for like your hoops for that particular pattern. So incredibly thoughtful like and again the photography is just beautiful so many beautiful ideas and just a wealth of information I feel like this is an entire course on embroidery and particularly for embroidery on your knits it's an entire course in a beautiful beautiful hardback book so I am just so pleased with myself for pre-ordering this. Um, I think this is an invaluable resource and I'm so happy that I have it in my making library. Um, yeah, this is something that, you know, for generations could be used. Like my nieces and nephews and their kids, I mean, they could all use this for like years because it's just, it's such a good resource. So absolutely beautiful book. I'm really excited about it. Very excited about it, as you can probably tell. Um, and yay for my very first purchase uh, from Lina Publishing. They make some quality stuff. <laughs> no wonder they're so big. I want to make sure I'm not forgetting anything for today. Let me double check. Books, make along. I did get another book, but I didn't bring it with me, so, and also I had plenty to talk about today, so <laughs> this is probably unnecessary. Um, while I'm thinking about it, let me show you a picture of the Harvest Cardigan by Tim Can Knits. Um, just so that you kind of, like, get an idea, because uh, I realized I didn't show a picture of it when I showed you mine. So here's the harvest card again. This is without the buttons and they just closed it with like a shawl pin, which is really pretty. And they've got the different lengths. So um, yeah, some people knit it kind of like, like long, almost tunic length. And then this person just did one button and did a very cropped, almost kind of shrug style cardigan. Um, yeah, really beautiful pattern and it's free. Uh, and they do have the child sizes, and <laughs> they're really cute. Oh my goodness. The child versions of things are is always adorable. So I think that's what we have for the projects and things. So if that's all you're here for, then thank you so much for joining me. I hope that you had fun. Uh, comment down below with any questions that you might have or any feedback or just to chat because I always love to chat with you guys. Um, yeah, so thank you if you are just here for the fibery things. I will see you next time. Uh, and if you want to hang out for a moment, just for a little bit of life chat, then yeah, we can hang out for just a few minutes more. What's going to be going on the last two weeks? It's been a lot, but I can't remember anything that has happened. Uh... Hmm. I should make notes. I said last time I should make notes about like live chat update things. And here I am 
what am I doing this weekend? This weekend, I am going to be doing some things with Alex. We haven't really hung out, just the two of us, um, for like some like good quality time together in months. So we're going to do that this weekend, and I'm looking forward to that because uh, he is pretty great, and I miss him. <laughs> so um, we are maybe going to the aquarium, uh, which is always fun. We are members of the aquarium, so it's it's great to go hang out with the fish. He actually had this really sweet idea. He said um, that he could bring a book and I could bring my knitting and we could like hide in one of those like alcoves where you're like surrounded by the water and the fish and you're just kind of like in a little alcove. And we can just hang out there for a while and just knit and read together surrounded by fish, which I thought was a really good idea. Uh, so I think we might do that. Um, I think that we are also going to be going to this restaurant I found in Chattanooga recently with a friend. It's all, um, local. Um, I wish I remember the name. It's something, something miel, maybe a, a flor de, flor de miel, maybe something about flowers and honey. Um, it's pretty new. It's a meadery slash restaurant and all of the restaurants, uh, food is locally sourced from local farmers, uh, so their ingredients are beautiful. Their presentation is beautiful. Their flavor combinations and their uh, preparation is beautiful. It was a beautiful experience. So I'm taking him there um, because we both like good food, and they've got some good food there. And I think he might enjoy doing like a little tasting of the mead there because it's, it's a little more on the dry side. So not really my style, but I think he might enjoy that. Um, so that'll be fun. We're going to an event with our friends on Sunday. Um, and I think we'll also be going to the farmer's market and farmer's market has Oktoberfest going on right now. So that's really fun. Um, let's see. So that's happening this weekend and I'm excited about that. We've got our Zoom knit night tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern time. Just a, a little reminder for that. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing some of my crafty friends that I haven't seen in a few months. I've missed you guys. <laughs> um, we've chatted online and we've texted and stuff, but uh, I've missed seeing your beautiful faces. Um, and then next week, I'm going to New Mexico. So... Um, yeah, I don't know if any of you guys are out there, uh, if you know of any good yarn shops for me to check out while I'm there, but I'm going to be in Albuquerque next weekend for the Balloon Festival because my best friend, uh, is, well, one of my best friends, uh, she has been wanting to go to this Balloon Festival for years and years, so we're going to go, and uh, then we're going to, you know, do some Albuquerque things and then head down to some national parks. So we're going to look at White Sands National Park and then Carlsbad Cavern National Park. And then we're gonna go down into Texas and go to Guadalupe Mountain National Park. So we're gonna have a whole big adventure and I'm very excited about it. I need to figure out what I'm taking to knit on the plane and in the car, because we're gonna have a rental car because we're gonna be driving all over New Mexico. <laughs> um, so I need to figure that out. I don't know if I wanna take my Stephen West shawl, my dotted rays, maybe I'll take my double take tea That'd be good to get to get some stuff done on that. We'll see. I'll figure it out. I might have my cardigan finished by then. Um, and a cardigan's a little bulky, so I'll figure out what I'm taking on the plane. But I think my double take tea is a good option um, because I'm just using one skein of fingering weight yarn at a time. Um, actually, that might be what I take. Even if I put the stitches that I've got on hold for right now and I cast on the other side, so the second half of my double take tee, because that's just one skein of fingering weight yarn. And I can put it on a set of needles that are wooden. Um, so I've got some wooden Knit Picks needles and the airport has never given me any problem with wooden needles before. So I think I might just do that because um, that's, that's a whole skein of fingering weight yarn. Um, that's plenty to keep me busy for a very busy five-day travel <laughs> experience. I don't need any more knitting than that because I'm I'm gonna knit in the airport and on the plane and maybe a little in the car, but that's all the knitting time I'm really gonna get. I'm gonna be busy, so I think that's, I've got my plan. Thanks for helping me talk through that. Um, so yeah, uh, that's gonna be happening next week. I'm really excited. I'm uh, trying to decide if I'm just gonna bring tennis shoes 
or trail running shoes or if I'm going to bring like my hiking boots because I don't know. I don't know how much hiking we're going to do. We might do a bit at Guadalupe Mountain and Carlsbad Cavern because I think they've got some nice hiking over there. Probably not tons at White Sands because I'm not going to hike through a white sand desert. That just doesn't sound fun. But we are going to be sledding down the sand dunes, which does sound like fun. <laughs> so I'll see if I can take video while I'm doing all of this stuff and do a little vlog for you guys. Uh, because I think it's going to be just a grand adventure. Um, so I'm, I'm really excited about it. We've been planning this trip for like a year. Uh, and I'm glad the national parks are getting to stay open so that I can actually go because we weren't sure about that a week ago whether or not the parks would be open or not so they'll be open and I'm very grateful for that uh yeah other than that um my dissertation research is kind of coming to a place I don't know if anybody cares about updates on that but it's kind of you know a big thing on my mind because I'm at the end of my PhD uh and I have finished data collection for my research and now I'm doing data analysis. And um, as it turns out, my data is not such that I need to hire a statistician for it. I can do the data analysis myself. So that saves me some money. Um, it doesn't save me time, but it does save me money. But I honestly don't think that, I don't think that analysis is gonna take me super, super long. Um, it's stuff I feel comfortable with and it's a type of statistics that I've done before and I'm not super worried about it. So it's more just a little tedious and <laughs> I'm a little burnt out at this point and I just don't really want to do it, but I'm going to do it because I want to graduate uh, because I've been in school for long enough. <laughs> the time has come. Uh, so I'm going to be doing data analysis. Uh, yeah, this week, next week, maybe. And hopefully that's all done and um, I can get the last two chapters written of my dissertation, submitted to my committee, and I plan to defend my dissertation this semester. So, oh, graduation is like right, like I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> I think graduation's in May, um, but I, I am hoping to be pretty much done with the work uh, by, you know, the beginning of December. So, whew, we're getting there. Uh, yeah, and then work is work. I don't think anybody ever cares about updates about work. It's just work. It's good. Um, that's, that's the life stuff. Uh, the puppies are good. Um, Alex is good. And I'm happy that it's fall. The leaves are finally starting to turn colors. It's going to get into the 40s this week. Um, yeah. During the day, it's still in the 80s or 70s. But I think next week, it's going to start getting into like the 60s during the day and 40s at night. So I'm real excited about that. Uh, so it's finally getting fallish. I think that that's about it for today. This has been a very long episode. I think that we are finally caught up though on all of the finished objects and things. So podcast episodes after this should be a little shorter, <laughs> more manageable. Um, I hope that you guys had a good time today hanging out with me. I had a great time hanging out with you and I will see you in the next episode video. Hopefully it'll be two weeks from now because I'm trying to get back on that every two weeks schedule. Oh, and I want to be doing other content as well. Um, I really want to do a lot more spinning content. So yeah, comment below. Let me know how you feel about the hand spinning stuff. Even if you don't spin yourself, do you like watching videos about spinning yarn? Um, because I watched so many videos about spinning yarn before I actually spun myself. Um, and, uh, I, I love that stuff. So I would like to produce more of that kind of um, video for you guys. But let me know what the interest is because um, I have no way to gauge that unless you tell me. Um, so I've got some plans though. I've got a breed study that I'm about to do and um, a couple other exciting kind of project ideas. So I'm going to let you guys go. This has gone on long enough. <laughs> Thank you for hanging out with me and I will see you in the next video. Bye.